Hey guys, let's go ahead and continue our discussion with limits at infinity. Uh, so we talked a little bit about rational functions and uh, we talked about the shortcut for doing limits at infinity with rational functions. But now we're going to talk about rational-ish functions. Uh, rational-ish is not really an official term, but what it means is uh, functions that are kind of like rational functions, but not quite exactly rational. Um, so for example here, example 7, limit as x goes to positive infinity of x to the 5 halves plus 2x squared minus 3, all divided by 14 minus 3x to the 7 halves. So remember, a rational function is a polynomial divided by another polynomial, but uh, neither the top nor the bottom is a polynomial, right? Here, why not? Um, x to the 5 halves, fractional power of x, that means it's not a polynomial. Here, x to the 7 halves, fractional power of x, not a polynomial. Okay, remember, in a polynomial, all the powers of x have to be positive integers or zero. Um, okay, so what do we do though? Well, the shortcut's actually still going to work, um, but now we have to be careful. We can't use the word degree because um, the word degree, officially speaking, only applies to polynomials uh, in this kind of context here. So it doesn't make sense to talk about the degree of the top um, because it's not a polynomial, and it doesn't make sense to talk about the degree of the bottom because it's not a polynomial. But you could still talk about the highest power of x, right? Um, so it's actually, we can really use just the same rules, but instead of saying degree, we have to say highest power of x, simply because these aren't polynomials anymore. Um, so we just have to be careful with the terminology. But actually, the same shortcut rules still apply. They're actually identical, exactly the same. The rules are still the same. Um, you just have to be a little bit careful about what's happening. So, uh, but let's not do this with the shortcut method. Uh, the shortcut method really, if you're doing something like this on a quiz or a test, uh, you're probably going to have to show some work, do it the long way. So I want to run through this one like that. Um, so how do we do this the longer way? Um, well, we're actually going to do it the same way we did the uh, rational function stuff the longer way. You find the highest power of x that appears everywhere in the top and the bottom, and then you multiply the top by 1 over x to that power, and you multiply the bottom by the same thing. So here, x to the 5 halves, uh, x to the second power, just a constant, just a constant. Here's x to the 7 halves. And um, 7 halves, that's the highest power of x that appears, right? So 5 halves, that's 2.5. Here's 2. Here's uh, x to the 0, x to the 0. And then here's x to the 3.5. So this is the highest power of x that appears. So what we're going to do is multiply the top by 1 over x to the 7 halves. And we're going to multiply the bottom also by the same thing. All right. So multiply the entire top by that, multiply the entire bottom by that. So then what are we going to have? Uh, we're going to have uh, equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of a uh, big mess here. So we're going to have x to the 5 halves divided by x to the 7 halves. And then plus... 2x squared, but instead of writing 2x squared, let me write 2x to the 4 halves, just so that the next step is easier. That's totally not necessary, but it just makes the next step a little bit easier, um, divided by x to the 7 halves, and then minus 3 over x to the 7 halves. All right, getting a little messy here, I guess. Um, what's happening on the bottom now? We have 14 over x to the 7 halves. And then what happens uh, in the next term? We have th minus 3x to the 7 halves divided by x to the 7 halves. Okay, so now we need to simplify this a little bit. So uh, what happens next? This equals the limits as x goes to positive infinity of what? Well, here, x to the 5 halves divided by x to the 7 halves. That's going to simplify to uh, 1 divided by x to the 2 halves, in other words, just 1 over x. All right. What happens over here? 2x to the 4 halves over x to the 7 halves, that's going to simplify to uh, plus 2 over x to the 3 halves. Okay. Um, what happens over here? Minus 3 over x to the 7 halves, that actually can't be simplified anymore, but that's fine. Um, on the bottom, 14 over x to the 7 halves. Nothing to be done there. And then here, uh, minus 3, because the x to the 7 halves just cancel there. Okay, 
So now we do the same thing that we did a couple times before when we did uh, limits at infinity with rational functions a longer way. We just look at each term separately by itself. So as x shoots off to positive infinity, where does this guy go? Well, 1 over x um, is going to go to 0, right? As x gets really super huge, 1 over x gets really super tiny. So this guy uh, goes off to 0. So this just goes off to 0. Um, what about here? 2x, or sorry, 2 over x to the 3 halves. Well, as x goes to infinity, x to the 3 halves also goes to infinity. So 2 over x to the 3 halves is going to go to 0. So this whole thing also goes to 0. Um, how about this guy here? Minus 3 over x to the 7 halves. Well, as x goes to infinity, x to the 7 halves also goes to infinity. So 3 over x to the 7 halves is going to go to 0. Again, because you have a fixed number divided by something really super huge. And the thing that's super huge keeps getting huger and huger. So a uh, fixed number divided by something more and more huge goes to 0. How about on the bottom here? Uh, 14 over x to the 7 halves. Uh, again, just like this one up here, this is going to go to 0. Right? Uh, fixed number divided by something really super huge. And then minus 3 is just minus 3. So really what this limit equals, now we can drop the limit symbol, okay? Because uh, we've pretty much evaluated this. So it's 0 plus 0 minus 0, all divided by 0 minus 3. Or in other words, just uh, 0, right? Okay. So um, how would the shortcut help us on that? So again, if you have a problem like this, you're probably going to have to write it out uh, showing work like this. But um, you could remember the shortcut to kind of check your answer. So um, what did the shortcut tell us? It told us that if the degree for rational functions, if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, then the limit's going to be zero, right? Well, we can't talk about degrees because these aren't polynomials, but we can still talk about powers of x. So the highest power of x on top is 5 halves, right? The highest power of x on the bottom is 7 halves. The highest power of x on the bottom is larger than the highest power of x on the top. Therefore, the bottom grows much more quickly than the top, okay? Which means the limit is going to be zero. So remember, our shortcut told us that if the degree on the top is smaller than the degree at the bottom, then the limit is zero. Well, here there's no degrees, but there's highest powers of x. So the highest power of x on the top is smaller than the highest power of x on the bottom. Therefore, the limit is zero, um, which is what we ended up with here. So we could use the shortcut like that um, to kind of check our work there. Okay, so that's example seven. Uh, let's see another function that's kind of rational-ish, but again, not exactly rational function. Um, so we'll do example 8 here, and I think that'll be enough for this video. Yeah. Okay. So example 8. Uh, let's see, we have limit as x goes to positive infinity of um, x minus 6 divided by square roots of 9x squared plus 7. Okay, so um, here, so this isn't quite a rational function, why not? Well, the top is a polynomial, right? Um, that's good, but the bottom, it's not quite a polynomial. So 9x squared plus 7, yeah, that's a polynomial, but the square root here is kind of ruining that for us. Um, because we have the square root over everything here, uh, it's not a polynomial anymore. So this is not a rational function, so we can't talk about degrees, things like that. But um, we can still apply the shortcut here. But the problem is um, the square root kind of makes it tricky. So what I want to do here again um, is go through it the long way. And it's best to do that because if you have this kind of problem on a quiz or a test, you're probably going to have to show some work here. And it is a little bit tricky. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what's so tricky about it. So um, just like before, we want to identify the highest power of x on the top and the highest power of x on the bottom. Now on the top it's easy, right? Here's just x minus 6. So the highest power of x on top is just 1. Okay, that's good. Um, what about the bottom here? Well here's an x squared, but it's underneath the square root. So what we want to think about is this. Um, when x is really super uh, huge, 
um, the square root of 9x squared plus 7 kind of sort of behaves like uh, behaves like the square root of 9x squared. Right? So why is that? Um, because if x is really, really super huge, um, this plus 7 is not going to matter at all. So imagine x is 100 trillion. If you take 100 trillion and square it, multiply it by 9, uh, and then add 7 to it, what kind of a difference is that 7 going to make? Not much, right? Not a whole lot. Um, so when x is really super huge, uh, this root 9x squared plus 7 kind of behaves like root 9x squared. But root 9x squared, uh, what is that? That equals 3x, right? So um, basically what we can say is that when x is really super huge, root 9x squared plus 7 kind of behaves like 3x, in other words. So um, because we have the square root over here, uh, over everything like this, um, we can kind of ignore the 7 because we're taking a limit as x goes to infinity. So uh, the only part that matters is the 9x squared, and it's under a square root here. So what we have is really 3x. So the highest power of x on the bottom is actually x to the first because uh, the square root here kind of changes that for us. So um, the top is just x minus 6, and the bottom is behaving like 3x. All right. So um, really, what we want to do then is multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over x. Because um, the highest power of x on the top is x to the first, and the highest power of x on the bottom is essentially x to the first. Yeah, um, officially speaking, x to the first doesn't really appear anywhere. But we have an x squared here, and it's underneath the square root. So the bottom is behaving like x to the first. Yeah, multiplied by 3, but that, is, that doesn't actually matter. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do this a long way then. So the long way says multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over x. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's uh, erase this. So when we multiply this by 1 over x, multiply this by 1 over x, uh, what happens here? As these parentheses on the bottom we don't really need, but uh, this is going to equal the limit as x goes to positive infinity of what? Well, here x over x minus 6 over x. All right, then what happens on the bottom? Uh, we have 1 over x times the square root of 9x squared plus 7. So somehow we need to get this 1 over x inside of there somehow. How do we do that? Well, um, remember uh, 1 over x, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 1 over x uh, squared, right? Or if you're not comfortable with that jump, what you could say is just take the whole thing and square it. So you have 1 over x, whole thing squared. Right, and that's the same thing as 1 squared divided by x squared. But remember, 1 squared is just 1, right? So we could say this then. So 1 over x is the same thing as the square root of 1 over x squared. So let's go ahead and say this. I want to point out that, yeah, there are um, some technicalities here where if you take the square root of something squared, yeah, you should have an absolute value here. But we don't have to worry about that because uh, we're taking a limit as x goes to positive infinity. So x, we can just assume x is always a positive number. Because uh, if we take a limit as x goes to positive infinity, we don't care really what happens if x is negative. Because x is just shooting off far to the right. So that's all that really matters here. All right, so now we have this. So how does that help us? Well, remember, um, if you have square root of big ol' a times square root of big ol' b, that's the same thing as square root of big ol' a, big ol' b, right? So in this case, um, we have square root of this guy times square root of that guy, so we can put uh, this guy and that guy under the same square root sign. So let's go ahead and do that. So this equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of what's happening on the top now. x over x is just 1, uh, 6 over x is just 6 over x. Then on the bottom we have square root of, remember when we push this in here, um, it's going to be 1 over x squared times the whole thing, 9x squared plus 7, right? Times that whole thing in there, so we want to be careful with that. 
So let's go ahead and um, continue simplifying this. So we're almost there. So bring this up here. So let's say that equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of 1 minus 6 over x is still on top. And then on the bottom now we have, uh, we're going to have 9x squared over x squared plus 7 over x squared. So that's what we're going to have up here. Um, 9x squared over x squared plus 7 over x squared. All right, so one more simplification step here. Um, this equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of 1 minus 6 over x uh, over the square root of 9 plus 7 over x squared. Okay, so now we're ready to um, evaluate. So if we send at, uh, x off to positive infinity, where do all these pieces go? Well, 1 is just a constant, it just stays 1, there's no x's here. Um, as x goes to infinity, x is getting really super huge, so minus 6 over x is getting really super tiny. So this whole part just goes off to 0. All right. What happens down here? 9 is just a constant, it just stays 9. And then here we have 7 over x squared. So as x goes off to positive infinity, x gets really super huge. x squared also gets huge, even quicker. Um, and 7 over x squared is going to go to 0, because it gets really super tiny. So then uh, this whole limit equals uh, 1 divided by the square root of 9. And the square root of 9, you know, is 3, so this is 1 third. All right. So that's the long way to do it, and that's probably how you should do it on a quiz or a test or whatever. Um, but if we go back here, we can think about how to use the shortcut here. So it is kind of tricky with the square root, but uh, remember what we said over here before we erased it. We said, uh, when x is really super huge, this guy behaves like root 9x squared, or in other words, 3x. So um, really, this limit is actually the same thing as uh, equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of x minus 6 over square root of 9x squared, right? Um, which is like saying limit as x goes to positive infinity of x minus 6 over 3x. So if you just had this, x minus 6 over 3x, that's a rational function, right? Um, so the degree at the top is 1, the degree at the bottom is 1, so the shortcut says divide the leading coefficients, which would give you 1, because uh, this is just like 1 times x, right? So we have 1 divided by 3, and that would give you 1 third, which, remember, is the answer that we got here. So um, that's kind of the shortcut way of doing that, but I wouldn't really recommend doing that on a quiz or a test, but remember that just to uh, have something to check yourself with. So it is a really nice shortcut, and it's uh, really helpful. And if you can use it, by all means, go ahead and do it but make sure you're allowed to before you do. So that's that. Um, in the next video, we'll see some more examples of stuff like this.